I'm here at uh, Recatcher Canyon behind us uh, with Commissioner Phil Lyman from San Juan County. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Recapture, about uh, this, the, all the hoopla, I guess, that's around this Recapture ride, and really what the objective of this is. There's a lot of stuff out there right now in the media that isn't really telling what the what the point of this whole uh, gathering is for, what what it's about. Right. So I wanted to get with uh, get with you and have you sort of explain that to us and right from the horse's mouth, for lack of better words, I guess. Well, you know, I <laughs> I'm just one I'm just one perspective out of thousands of you know what goes on here in recapture. Um, but I have lived here my whole life, and I'm a fourth generation person from Blanding, and uh, have connections to this to this canyon. You know, both in my own experience and and generationally. And uh, you can't really see from this perspective, but we're sitting right next to Blanding. I think we'll get some some yeah. perspective on that. It sits right next to town. Uh, my my in-laws' uh, cabin was built down on the south end of Recapture at Fiddler's Green. And, so when the, when the BLM comes in and, and shuts down a canyon with concerns about archaeology, of course the county is interested and, and wants to hear what their concerns are. But when they start making comments like, uh, you know, that this trail was constructed in 2005 when you've been using it for your whole life, or when they say that this canyon has not had traffic through it, when you know that it has, and the historical record says that it has. History here, I mean, when, when is it documented that the first non-indigenous people were using this canyon and when was the road put in do you know roughly when all that was well you know i learned i learned a lot more as as we're going through i made a phone call this morning to our uh, to the director of our san juan county history foundation and asked her and she brought me the she brought me the the book blue mountain shadows that talks about the the history of recapture going back to 1879 and and then seriously used as a as a road in um, starting about 1880, and, and wagons were coming up and down this this, this road. Uh, it was a main thoroughfare from, from Bluff down on the river to Monticello. Blanding wasn't in existence at that time, um, but this was the road that they would use to get to Monticello. And just so people know, um, this canyon, it runs pretty much like a north-south direction, roughly, and it runs all the way from the Abajo Mountains, which is where Monticello is located, all the way down to the San Juan River, and that's why it was used as a thoroughfare through here. Because if you go in this country, if you go anywhere else, you're either running into canyons or you're having to go around canyons, whatever. This this canyon here, they could get in, just travel straight up and head to the Abajos. Right. So. Yeah, it was a, it was, a, it was a pretty flat creek bottom, and they could take their wagons up. So it made for made for easier travel. You know, um, probably ten years ago is when the beavers discovered recapture. So now you go down the bottom and you've got some pretty big ponds down there that, uh, you know, people like to see the water in San Juan County. It's not a real common sight. No animosity against beavers, but with those dams, a lot of the, a lot of that section where those beaver ponds are is where the old creek bed was and where, and where they drove their wagons. And that's, uh, you know, it's a shame that uh, you take that circumstance, that condition, and then it's used as justification to deny any access to the canyon because there there was no road there. Well, we could go in as a county and you know take more aggressive action and remove beavers and keep those ponds out of there, or we could go a little bit with the more natural, organic approach and 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 adjust the trail when it needs to be adjusted. And that's that's all that's happened over the years. Mm-hmm. I, I was talking to uh, Ben Black in town. Mm-hmm. And he was telling me that uh, when he was scouts, the scouts used to get out of school. They'd plan a camp out. They'd get out of school that afternoon, and they'd get their stuff. And they, because we're only about a mile from town, right? They'd hike over to the canyon edge here, drop into the canyon, and have a nice camp out for the weekend, and then hike back home. Well, that was exactly my my uh, piece I did in the Deseret News was, you know. It, you know People think sometimes you're making things up for a political purpose, but yeah, Fridays, especially this time of year, uh-huh. I mean, you can see how beautiful it is, and you know, we're just first of May, so you know, we're just itching for school to get out on Friday <laughs> so we can get home, grab our 22s or whatever else we need, our canteen, our sleeping bag, and, and then we could hike 
to to the edge of recapture and and camp. And it's like you're in the middle of nowhere, but you're still so close to home. Yeah. You can. Yeah, it's it's you yeah. you got Westwater on the west side of town, and that's a great canyon, and, and people like to go down there and hike. Um, but recapture is a little bit more conducive, I think, for the camping and and things. At least it was mm -hmm. at that time. So yeah, Ben's right. Yeah, he was that's, that's what we did. Telling some pretty funny stories about it when he was a kid. So. I think Ben was one of my scout leaders when I was a kid. So. <laughs> Back into the 1800s, and I understand there's some stories. There's even legend about the Spanish using it, doing gold and getting massacred by the, or having to leave the area real quick. So they hid their gold in recapture and and uh, then left and stuff. So supposedly, some people found some silver doubloons from from oh, really? that era. So it was either. Uh, Either a bank robbery that you know dropped some of their their coins, or could have gone back to the Spanish conquistadors uh -huh. that used it as a as a route. It was a good place to travel. You know, you've got natural springs all the way up through it, and that's what you know people don't realize what it took to travel back in those days. The main thing was that you had to be where there was some water and some food, and so you just stuck pretty close to to those, those places. Re Recapture is probably the wettest canyon that runs from San Juan River up to the Abajo, so mm -hmm. that's why it was used. Yeah, with the water in that natural corridor, making it easy travel. Yeah. That was one thing we were talking about earlier, was you've got recapture here that has a lot of habitation in it by indigenous people, and you have west water on the west side of the landing that has a lot of habitation as well. Both of them have running water. Right. And all year long they have water in it to some degree or another. And so for those people, the that's why they settled here. I mean, that's why they were here. That's why the pioneers settled here. I mean, they needed water to survive, and these are two good roots, two sources. Right, and uh, and every and everywhere in between was yeah. was you know good. It was good farm ground, yeah. and still is good farm ground. And on the other side of recapture, you can't really see the. There's a little bit of clearing you can tell up there on the other side. So you got you got the community that sits here, the farm ground that sits here, and for some roll of the dice, unlucky fate, we have this strip of BLM that separates the community from its farm ground. And uh, and I've said, with 8,000 square miles, over 5 million acres to choose from, to protect, the focus comes right on this small little strip that divides Blanding from its, uh, you know, its productive farm ground. And mm -hmm. that, that in itself, to me, is, uh, I don't know, calculated to, to inflict pain and and use leverage against people in Blanding. If I remember right, there's an old placer mine. Yeah. That was closed, I think they closed down in 80, 81 or something like that. I think that. it was right in there. It's in recapture. And then they've got the dam they put in recapture. It's up there where the highway goes across now. Right. Everyone that comes to Blanding from the north crosses, crosses recapture. Crosses recapture. <laughs> they probably don't realize it. <laughs> yeah. And then you've got major roads to the south as well. They cross it. They yeah. cross it. Uh, highway 262 and the Perkins Road down here, and among others. So. Yeah. So there's, I mean, this this canyon is a more than just a. I mean, it is a centerpiece for this area, not only for the recreation but usage. I mean, there's uh, talking to some of the guys about them running their cows in here. Oh yeah. When they used to do that, and just I mean, all kinds of stuff. So a livelihood and. You know, with this, uh, the attention that comes to this, you, it's it's kind of fun because you get a lot of people that come out and tell you stories that you hadn't heard before. Edwin Hawkins stopped by my office the other day and talked about, um, you know, as soon as he graduated from high school, getting recruited by one of the local cowboys, Alma Red, to come out here and run cows. And he was from the west side of town, so Westwater was his playground, but he came out here and ran cows in recapture that summer and, and kind of fell in love with it. And then he tells me about... Uh, um, when his son got his first Volkswagen bug, bug they came down and <laughs> drove from Perkins Road all the way up to where the old sawmill was at oh, the top really? of Recapture. And, and the sawmill was located where Recapture Dam is now. Where the, right? where the lake is. Where the lake is, The lake yeah. covers the old probably, sawmill. Probably, uh, you know, three-quarters of a mile north of, of the dam is where the big sawmill tower was. And when was that that he did that, did he uh, say? That would have been around 81, 82. So at that time, the road was all the way through there. Yeah, the road was still all the way yeah. through, I would say. I yeah. think that, that was before the beavers. Yeah. That was before the beavers came in. You couldn't do that now.